G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Friday morning here in Australia. So we're waiting to see, are we going to have the traditional weekend retracement? We haven't really had anything over the last few days. The last sort of, you know, around about sort of week or so, things have just been going absolutely haywire. Now, Bitcoin has struggled to break above that sort of $38,000 mark, though. It has kind of stalled here. And look, that's all right. You know, it, it can't just constantly go up forever. It has come a long way, though. We need to remember from the lows of around about sort of twenty eight, twenty nine thousand dollars it wicked down to. Really, it kind of sat around the thirty, thirty one thousand dollar mark. So we're still up around sort of seven, six to seven thousand dollars from there. So uh, it's not all bad news. Uh, it doesn't just constantly go up, as you can see. You know, this is where we were. And we dipped down and we're now we've almost got back up to those kind of uh, old marks uh, and again that's only around about thirty eight thousand dollars there we still need to get above forty two thousand dollars for us to go into price discovery ethereum seems to be holding really really well though which is nice uh, again you know it, it has been a little bit higher uh, i think it got up to 1680 maybe nearly seventeen hundred dollars there might have even breached over and we've had a slight pullback and again that's quite stock standard for the market the good thing is we are staying well above that trillion dollar mark at the moment btc dominance uh, continues to drop around about that 60 percent we'll have to wait and see whether that holds uh, and again so eth dominance growing and altcoin dominance growing but you know you can tell that it's alt season just by these uh, gas prices at the moment i mean 208 uh, guay for gas prices yeah, I can't even touch Ethereum at the moment. That's so sad. Uh, you know, Kyber Network really is the one that uh, kind, of, kind of kills me the most. I can't use it at all. So I've got my Kyber staked and I can't vote and I can't uh, claim any of the rewards. The gas prices are just too much. It just chews up uh, everything completely. So that's really sad. Uh, I've never used uh, Uniswap uh, Exchange. Uh, and again, I wouldn't be using it now with those kind of gas prices. They're just way too much. But we can see it's basically just a sea of green here. Green all over the place. The top 100, that's what I like to focus on. You can jump out of the top 100 and have a look if you want. But that's fairly risky stuff there. And as I've said before, I really like to stay in the top 50 generally. I do have a couple of things outside of the top uh, 50. Uh, but almost everything I have is in the top 100 and there really are only a couple of projects outside of the top 100. That's where I like to uh, focus uh, my uh, investing uh, in the other safer picks for me. But again, never financial advice, just my personal opinion. All right, what has really pumped? <sighs> Uma just continues to go. So anyone who got onto Uma, congratulations, you are cheering. Uh, Zero X doing quite well. Ave, I mean, it just goes from strength to strength to strength. Although I do think at some stage there's going to be a pullback. So I will be waiting for a bit of a uh, sort of retracement to get into some more Ave. Dogecoin just continues to kind of pump. Still hasn't reached its old all time high though. So uh, good on anyone who's uh, in Doge at the moment. Elon is tweeting the backside out of it. <laughs> so that's probably got a lot to do with it. Compound, Maker. Look again, just a lot of DeFi plays. I can't say it enough. DeFi is where you're going to make the craziest gains, in my personal opinion, not financial advice. Uh, and I have placed myself uh, in a number of positions. Ren's one of them, Synthetics Network is another, Aave is another, uh, I've got some Carver, I've uh, definitely got Chainlink and things like that. That is where I think the biggest gains will be made. But look, Bitcoin's still making good gains and so is Ethereum, uh, I have both of those. Uh, and we can see, look, even XRP uh, is starting to pump up, which is good. But it's down a long way from where that sort of spike was there. And again, it really still is facing those SEC uh, issues. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. What about losers? Has there been any big losers? Not really. Again, uh, MDEX, it's just hanging in the top 100 there. It's been going down for a while. I'm going to say it probably had a crazy pump. Litecoin pulled back. Uh, Litecoin really hasn't performed as well as what I thought uh, it was going to perform, but look, it's it's still doing better than uh, what any kind of traditional stock would do. I'm well up over 100%, so I've doubled my money on my Litecoin, but uh, in comparison to how my other coins have done, hasn't done so good. But I still like Litecoin, you know, they're... Uh, 
doing partnerships with Cardano. You know, they've basically been signed off as, you know, sort of regulated and pay, PayPal and things like that accept them. So, yeah, I still believe in Litecoin. I'm holding on to my Litecoin. I will sell some of them when I think we're kind of near the end of the peak cycle, but I'll just be holding on to my Litecoin long term. All right, but again, so a double digit loss for MyDEX and then everything for MDEX, sorry, and then everything else is just single digit losses. And again, you know, Litecoin, if you've lost 5%, but you're still up 20% for the week, no one's going to complain about that unless you were just unfortunate enough to literally buy at the very top and then, you know, yeah, you're now 5% down. But the thing we need to remember about Litecoin is it's not anywhere near its old all-time high yet. It's still about under half. So I think oh, Litecoin's old all-time high, I think, was $360. So we're well under half. So if it kind of plays out like has it does, has it does, how it has done previously, you should be able to at least double your money in Litecoin. And again, never financial advice, just my personal opinion. But it should be double and some, and then we kind of go into price discovery and see where it gets to from there. You know, we'll just have to wait and see. Quant, you know, again, all single digit losses. So nothing too major here. The gains compared to the losses are outstanding in the top 100, except for MDEX. And again, I'm going to say they probably had a really big pump, and so now they're simply uh, retracing. And it's a coin that came from outside of the top 100 into the top 100. All right, the Bitcoin chart, let's have a look. So we had the breakout, it's been confirmed, and now we've got a bit of a spinning sort of a spinning top candle right there. And look, it is late at night. Uh, so it's, you know, nine o'clock at night uh, over in UTC time. So this uh, candle worries me a little bit in all fairness, because it's just a lot of indecision. So the wick to the top uh, is almost as equal to the wick to the bottom, uh, and it is very, very uh, undecided. So I wouldn't be surprised if this rolls over and comes back down and bounces off this before we then make our next leg up. I'm not saying that's what it's going to do. I'm just saying there's indecision. I mean, look, you can see here something similar. You know, lots of wicks, hardly anybody. Indecision, even more indecision there, and then it rolled over. Now, it doesn't always happen like that, but it's generally a pretty good indication that the market is the market is just uncertain. And particularly with the weekend, maybe now this is just going to be the weekend because obviously we didn't get the sell-off uh, for any time earlier. So again, this is a Thursday night candle, so no sell-off on the Thursday, it's indecision. So then we'll be waiting for Friday, Saturday and Sunday to see if there's a weekend sell-off or do we just keep pumping? Who knows? All right, a couple of interesting stories that I found. So pro-Bitcoin Senator Cynthia Loomis is now on the Senate Banking Committee. So she's actually been involved in cryptocurrencies for quite some time. And it's great that she's uh, become a senator and all the rest of it. But now she's also on the Banking Committee. So someone who's, uh, you know, pro-Bitcoin is finally, you know, infiltrating, you know, these walled garden kind of systems and there was something very interesting that i read down here so number one senator loomis is a bitcoin holder since 2013 so she's like an og she's been in it since almost the start and she is determined to put the cryptocurrency at the forefront of the country's political debate this is what we need this is where the mass adoption comes from it is already slowly happening we know that micro strategy had their uh function the other day function, I don't know what you're going to call it. Seminar is probably a better word. And there was 1,400 institutional people there. So it is all slowly but surely starting to happen. Now down here, the senator said that most government officials fear the cryptocurrency, mostly because they don't understand it. I would completely agree with that. And that's most people in general. I know people I talk to, unless they're kind of into cryptocurrencies, Whenever I talk about it, they're like, oh, that funny money, that's you know going to zero and it's going to get banned and all the rest of it. And I don't know where, well, I do know where they get this information from. It's just there'll be some person who doesn't like cryptocurrency uh, and will read about it. And that was me originally. The first time I heard about it, I said exactly the same thing. You know, you just hear this stuff from someone, oh, that's not even real and that's going to zero and it's just fake. And it's not until you go and do your own research and search around a bit that you realize that that's actually not what's happening. 
Now, back in 2017, when I got into it, there was very little kind of adoption from institutional players. So we didn't have that news, but it was more just a belief after looking into it myself. And I was like, no, I think this has got some legs and I think this is much better than the system that we have. Now, I can say to people when they say things like that to me, that's actually incorrect and false. It is being adopted by you know, banks and governments, it's being regulated, it's not going to zero, or at least I don't think it's going to zero. It's highly unlikely that it's going to zero. You know, it's been around for 12 years, there's been no faults in the code that anyone can find, so it's probably here to stay. There's no guarantees in life. It is, you know, there's a very small possibility that it could go to zero, but look, then the stock market could go to zero. Oil could go minus. I, I guarantee you, if you had asked someone a year ago, you know, oil would never go below zero, and they'd say, absolutely, guess what? It did. But even then, oil's come back. It's not gone to zero. I think oil is going to be less and less used. We are moving to more green alternatives, and I think it's the same with Bitcoin. Although I just don't see how Bitcoin could go below zero and then come back from it. That'd be one interesting black swan event, and I don't know what would happen there. But Bitcoin is the future, cryptocurrencies is the future. So not just Bitcoin alone, Ethereum, you know, possibly XRP, they get through this uh, SEC thing. But there's a number of cryptos out there that I think are going to be around long term, particularly in the DeFi sector. That is really what cryptocurrencies was about. It was a currency. So that whole DeFi space, I think, is going to be massive. And once people understand it, they will be less uh, fearful of it. And then they will eventually start to accept it and then they will put it out there to other people. That's generally how it works. All right. This is very interesting. So I do believe the gaming sector and NFTs and that is going to be massive. I don't think it's going to be that massive this run. I think it needs to be widely adopted and entrenched in our financial systems before all of that can play out. But we already have it slowly starting to happen. So you can soon win Bitcoin by playing Counter Strike. So crypto crypto gaming is gaining momentum through original games like the Sandbox and Axie Infinity. But we're also starting to see the technology implemented into some of the biggest traditional games on the market. Engines plugin for using non fungible token uh, crypto assets on Minecraft servers is one key example. I do have some engine and I will be investing more heavily into gaming stuff in the next uh, bull run because I don't think it's going to be this one. I really do think this one will be mostly DeFi. I'm not saying you can't make any gains in NFTs and all the rest of it. You will. I already have. Engine uh, has done okay for me finally. It took a long time. But I think its big peak will come in the next one. DeFi is where it's going to happen first. Now, here's one that might actually earn you some crypto in the process. This week, Chris, crypto startup, Z, I don't even know how to say this, I'm going to butcher it, but Zebedee will launch the first servers uh, for popular first-person PC shooter, Counter-Strike. Global offensive that, app, that implement infuse... God, I'm struggling... Global Offensive, or GS, CSGO, that implement Infuse, it's technology that allows users to earn small amounts of Bitcoin based on their in-game performances. This is what is going to be the future of gaming. People love gaming, and they're going to want to find ways to earn money for doing it, particularly those sort of professional computer you know, computer game players, and believe it or not, that that is such a thing. When I was young, there was no such thing. I loved playing computer games, but there was no way you could make money of it. Now it's actually a living. There's kids that make millions of dollars from playing, yeah, playing in tournaments, and they also play on YouTube. You, can, you know, search. Uh, I'm sure if you've got kids or you're young, you'll be able to find it. Uh, I know lots of kids watch other people playing computer games and say that is going to be massive in the future i just don't think it's going to be that big in this one DeFi is where it's at but look if you like playing this game well you might be able to earn some bitcoin doing it all right you know everybody's getting into crypto now so ll cool j and paul tudor jones bet on 72 million dollar crypto fund so basically what's happening here is LL Cool J, he's becoming a venture capitalist uh, and he's starting to invest in uh, you know, upcoming projects within, within the crypto space. But look, it's not just him. They were also teaming up 
uh, with guys from Pepsi, yeah, PepsiCo. So other backers include former PepsiCo CEO Indra Noy, I'm going to butcher that, and Twitter CWO Anthony Nodo. So this is the space where things are starting to happen. The mega rich are now getting involved. So as we've spoken about before, institutional uh, buyers, they are here. It's time. They're getting in. And this is early because the institutions get in before the retail. If institutions are getting in now, you are still early. Now, just my personal opinion, never financial advice. I have to say that all the time. I don't want people to, you know, take my word for it. You can use what I say as a pu- as a piece of the puzzle, but please go out and do further research. Don't simply take what I uh, say as gospel or any other YouTube person or just Twitter. You can take that as a holistic approach. Take a little bit of my words, some other people's words. You know, go on to some places like this and get some, you know, good news. Go on to Telegram. Go on to Discord. Please beware of the scams out there. And that's where you're going to get all your kind of information from. Take it as a holistic approach, never just one person's. All right, last but not least. So, Bitcoin has become the fourth most popular investment in the U.S., And this is going to continue to grow. Although in Japan, they're not so bullish about it. So, uh, you know, you'll have to take your advice from a few different sources. Just because US is bullish on it doesn't mean it's going to go worldwide. But just because Japan isn't as bullish on it doesn't mean it won't go absolutely crazy. But again, I've shown a number of different stories uh, on my channel over the, you know, God, how long it'd have to be around about eight months I've been doing videos now. So most of the videos I've shown have been nothing but super bullish on cryptocurrencies. But I do try to be non-biased and I've shown ones that haven't been so bullish for the market. So again, you have to take it as that holistic kind of approach. But for me, I see this as more bullish news again. So we go down here and it shows what people in the US are putting their money into. So 54% still think stocks are the best bet. And look, while I don't personally like stocks, they have performed extremely well and there's more and more money just getting dumped into them. So you can't say that they're you know underperforming, whether you think it's a bubble or not, who knows. But look, most things are a bubble at some stage. Uh, and if stocks do pop, they're not going to zero. They're simply going to retrace to a healthy level and then start to make their way back up again. No different to our old mate here, Bitcoin. So 30% are putting their money into uh, Bitcoin. It's Again, it's the fourth most popular investment. It's behind real estate and then it's behind uh, 401k. So I'm not sure exactly what a 401k is in the States, but I think it's something similar to our super scheme here in Australia. So people uh, are putting money into that. That is their second most popular bet I guess and I don't like to call it a bet but investment strategy but number one is stocks uh, still and look I don't think stocks are going to go away I think stocks will eventually make their way over into the blockchain blockchain and digital space all right love to know your thoughts down below do you think stocks are still the better bet do you think bitcoin is the fourth most popular uh Not fourth most popular, because we already know it is the fourth most popular. But where is cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin in your investment strategy? I'm going to say it's probably a lot higher than number four, considering you're watching this video. But do you have stocks? Do you have, you know, a 401k if you're in uh, America? I know in Australia we have to have super. Are you putting extra into super? What about, about real estate? That is a place that I want to get into. I will be taking some of my profits from cryptocurrencies and getting into real estate and look if i'm if i do well enough and i'm lucky enough i'll also be looking to uh buy a business that's something i'd like to do i've said that before that's my plans again love to know your investment strategy are you all crypto are you just you know 50 percent crypto 50 percent stocks or are you split up between uh these type of things as well love to know uh, your strategy down below Uh, My strategy is uh, mainly crypto at the moment. I do have super as well, uh, but I don't really have much stocks at all at the moment. And real estate is something that I want want to get into into the future. All right, that's it from me. Do me a favor, hit the like button down below, hit the subscribe, 
click that bell all icon it'll give you updates of when I'm releasing videos which I do daily stay safe be kind to one another hopefully you're all on that game train and I'll see you next time